What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. And this is Full Size Run Show, your weekly dose of everything sneakers. Before we get into the show, do remember, you can always follow Full Size Run on Instagram and on Twitter at Full Size Run Show. We also have guests on deck from Sneakers the Book. We will be talking to Howie and Alex. We had a couple minutes to go through the book. There's a lot of great interviews in there. We're going to be breaking down the book and the process of bringing that book to the market. And, of course, we have all of our segments. But, very importantly, before we get into the show, Brendan and Welty, I want to mention... Please do. We've been getting a lot of... Oh, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. that... Now that okay, so we're on, we're on the Soul Collector YouTube page. Yeah. Please subscribe to that. Right. Also, we are now on the Complex YouTube page as well. Correct. And there is plenty of not even not, not only even on the Complex one, but also now it's seeped into Soul this Collector. This is so strange. So people are comparing us to Everyday Struggle, a yes. popular Complex show. Yes. Full disclosure, we are in the same studio. It's that simple. We use the same table. Because but, our budgets suck. But let's just remember that we started two and a half weeks before Everyday Struggle. Tell them. And there is literally Tell nothing em. in common besides the studio, besides the table, besides the fact that we are people talking. Yep. I, I don't see the comparison other right. than that. And it, the show doesn't happen every day, so. That's But there is very plenty of struggle point. involved, so I, I do understand <laughs> that. Also, very importantly, I am not white. Please stop. <laughs> not white. My last um, name is Lopez. I don't understand how y'all can you get are, this. You are white. Um, I'm half Armenian, if that counts for anything. <laughs> white. I'm also white. <laughs> Brendan, we have news to get into. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is all the sneaker news that happened in the past week. Welty, first thing. So, uh, as everyone knows, Complex Con is... When, when is Complex Con, first of all? It is uh, next week. Next right? week, November 4th N November 5th. 5th. Long Beach, California. Go buy your tickets. Go yep. buy your tickets. They are, they are quickly selling out. Matt ARD Welty is going to perform. Matt Welty will be in the building? I will be in the building. Matt Welty will be in the building. Autographs, or are you going to be too busy? I might be signing some Adidas sneakers if you come up to me. Okay. Oh. No boost. No boost. No okay. boost. Last year was a big kind of uh, moment for Nike in the Air Force One. Yep. Um, you had Stadium Goods selling uh, the Hundred Grails. You also had the release of the the SFAF one at Complex yep. Con. Either way, uh, got announced yesterday um, that there will be another massive. Uh, Air Force One installation at Complex Con this year. Um, the biggest news is that there are five Air Force Ones dropping at Complex Con mm -hmm. this year. Five of the biggest collaborations Off White, mm -hmm. Acronym, mm -hmm. Just Dawn, mm -hmm. Travis Scott, and Bring Back the Rockefeller Air Force One. Yeah. Crazy. Huge slate of releases. Um, Crazy. The, the Off White pair is an exclusive to Complex Con. The rest of the stuff will getting a wider release later on. Yep. What are our favorite pairs from this set of Air Force Ones, by the way? The, my obvious choice is going to be the Rockefeller Air Force Ones just because that means so much to me. Yeah. But I don't want to go with that obvious choice because I think it, that's too easy of a layup. I'm going to go with the acronyms. I wanted the original run that we missed, and I did not think they were going to sell as fast as they did. They did. This is my, I guess, my consolation prize. Let's 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 talk about it for a second though, because I know there was a lot of uh, discussion the other day about the Rockefeller Air Force Ones coming back and yeah. people's authenticity of being able to wear that shoe yeah. in 2017. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on that? I, I will say this: I'm not going to be exclusionary and say you can't rock sneakers if you're not this no or not intended. that. Uh, but I, I see where your point is. Like it's a little culture vulturey. It's a little poserish to rock a sneaker that has the Rock logo on it just because it's a sneaker and not because you can like name, recite any bars from any Rock album at all. Mm. It's not even just saying the music. It's like, if you want to talk about this, this might be like one of the most like street official sneakers of all time. Sure. Well, as, as Chris and by sure. a street official man himself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Let um, me ask you a question though. Are you rocking this sneaker? I'm not rocking it. So because not, of that. Not because of that per se, okay. but uh, I think it's a dope sneaker. Maybe just not a sneaker for me, but I okay. definitely see where that's a bit awkward. Tell me yes or no. He's saying no. I'm not rocking it. I am. Next. You're rocking it. Yes. Okay. Do you have the juice? Yes. <laughs> Rich, let's talk about Big Baller Brand. Let's always talk about Big Baller Brand. Any day we're not talking about Big Baller Brand is a day that didn't exist. So... Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba, a legend in my eyes. He had some words to say about LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball, Big Ball, brand, the whole BBB movement. Kobe yep. basically said, quote, it's not good enough to have a shoe and launch a shoe in that market, in that business. You have to make sure the product is there. That's the only way you can challenge the big guys is if the innovation and the quality of the product is there, end quote. He also went on to say that he approves of the general idea of doing things one's Indeed. own way. 
yeah, being indie? independent, but okay. kind of suggesting, I think, uh, as we all have, have agreed, that the innovation isn't there. The, you know, the product doesn't really speak for itself. I mean, basically, right, so he's basically shitting on the sneaker yeah, in not in, so in direct a, terms. Yeah, in a, in a quite PC way that but maybe he, wouldn't make But he's being or, honest. That's been the biggest criticism of a big baller brand is that, like, you can't charge $500 for a sneaker if your sneaker's yeah. fucking trash. Yeah. yeah. More important to me is that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, in my personal opinion, the best, greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan, and my second greatest player of all time, Kobe Bryant, have both spoken about big baller brand. So, so they're winning. LeVar and Lonzo are still winning. It doesn't matter what the product is like because they're keeping BBB in headlines, and to me, that's dope. Hopefully we'll get our hands on a pair. Yes. Uh, next sneaker news item that we want to talk about is the latest bit of Adidas Yeezy 350, sorry, Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2. I always get it wrong. Uh, it's rumored release info. This stuff has been shifting quite a bit. The semi-frozen yellow pair is supposed to release on November 18, followed by the Beluga 2.0 that you see here on November 25th. Of course, these are renderings. There are no leaked images. A, a busy month for Adidas, but I don't think they're going to overshadow what Nike's doing this month. Oh, Nike absolutely not. All this Air Force One stuff, all this Virgil stuff is going to come back again. I mean, And the shoe is fucking tired. So. That, yeah. That's the thing. It's like we put this, full disclosure, we put this sneaker in the show because we have to. Yeah. We don't want to talk about this shit anymore, period. Not because it's not a good sneaker, not because of anything else, but we've spoken about it at length every damn show, and we're still doing it because we have to. Kanye never really came out and pushed this sneaker at all. He wore it a couple times, but never like spoke on it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's kind of moved on in terms of- To the 500, of so 700. All right. Let, we let, should all move on. We, let's move on. Welty, what's up next? What, uh, what's up next? What's up next? What's up next, Welty? The best and worst of the week? Yes, that Sorry. is up next, Welty. Sorry. What is the best and worst of the week, <laughs> Welty? Let us know. Well, I mean, we've seen some some crazy shit, but yes. you know, Brendan, there was something that you saw on the internet uh, this week. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my best pick of the week, something that was actually a little bit older, but is just now surfacing for sale. This Nike knife that uh, an artist here in New York City created. He's, he, he only made 10 of them. That's the story. Um, okay. he, he's selling them for $2,500, so I unfortunately will not be getting one. Is that your price range? <laughs> it's just barely. The budget? I would love to have one of these for unboxings and things of that nature. We or, need you one know, right here. If you're at a sneaker lineup and things get dicey, you just pull out the, you know? You got to have your Rock Air Force Ones <laughs> on, though. <laughs> uh, this thing is amazing. I hope this guy doesn't get sued by Nike. Maybe he'll just fly under the radar. I don't know. I mean, I mean, do they really want to test them if that's what he's got? <laughs> it's it's part of a, a series. He also you, has like a Facebook logo. Pro bar do you think like do you think he's gonna open knuckles. the cease and desist letter with with? <laughs> would you rock these with a pair of air stabs? <laughs> With this All shit, right, dude. well, T, tell me about the best thing you saw in sneakers this week. Uh, best thing I saw in sneakers. This is the best. This is the best. Okay, I just or, to, or it's a, it's I a, just wanted to know. I'll put it this way: it's a cool thing that I saw in sneakers this okay. week. Um, it better be the best, man. That's what the segment's all about. Yeah, but it better be the fucking. You're best. telling me it's the best. It's the best. I'm gonna assume it's the best. Uh, this year, uh, Sneaker Room, a shop in Jersey City, New Jersey, is doing a collaboration with Nike mm -hmm. to bring back the now the Air More Money, mm -hmm. which uh, is a reinterpretation of Reggie Miller's or, old Sig. Or wasn't his Sig, but he was a shoe that he yeah. had a P. You get what I'm saying? Um, they're doing it every year. They do a shoe for uh, breast cancer. Last year was actually the first year that they had done an official collaboration with Nike on the Air Trainer Cruise. Mm -hmm. Three sneakers um, in limited uh, different quantities. The white is going to be general release. The black one is going to be uh, 40 pairs. The pink one's wow. gonna be like 100, 100 something like that. So okay. And they, they tier the pricing up, right? So yeah, like yeah, but all the proceeds go to uh, breast cancer uh, That's charity. Cool. That's uh, cool. Last year, I think they raised something like seventy thousand dollars. That's great for, um, for that, which is cool. Um, I think it's uh, to me, it's like not a shoe that I personally really go for, but mm -hmm. I can get behind doing something like that within within sure. sneakers. I think when it, we we spoke about this, wealthy. One of the strangest things we've seen this year is this air more money now resurgence being put through these. Influencers that yeah, like, no one really knows about. Jesus and Mero had well, we know first, Jesus the first set of pairs. Ninth, like, Ninth Wonder, Wonder had a pair. That, to me, when Ninth, I'm like, way. I I like Ninth Wonder. You right. know, I don't need Ninth Wonder to get a sneaker collaboration. Crit, Big Crit also yeah, he has a pair. a pair this week. All right, it's just it's a very interesting rollout for early this guests on sneaker shopping. Shout out. 
Shout out to Big Crit. Rich, tell us about the worst thing you saw in, in sneakers or online this yes. week. Yes. I mean, there's probably a ton of bad things I saw, but this was really, really bad. And that is Nike's new MPLS throwback. Dude, this is terrible. The, the jersey itself is fine, whatever. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the, the, you have to put the Nike swoosh on it. I understand that now. That okay. ad! Do you I don't wish understand. it didn't... It wasn't like this? <laughs> don't... Don't kill a he's segment so, until I'm he's done so with it. so proud of himself when he <laughs> yeah. makes these fucking jokes. Listen, I understand that <laughs> NBA teams have ads the on their jerseys now. I get it. But MPLS never had an ad on its jersey, so what's up with this revisionist history of putting the ad on the jersey? I don't understand why we're doing that. It makes no sense. All about it makes the it, fucking dollars, bro. I understand it, but it makes it a completely inauthentic jersey. Wish? I wish it wasn't there. I'm gonna All give right. you that. All but right. at the same time, at the same time, who even knows if Wish was around when the Lakers were playing in what, yeah, what is Wish? I don't even know. We're not talking about the sneaker boutique. Obviously. That's the point. I don't even know. It's disgusting. Shouldn't right. be there. Did, what, did you have one of the throwbacks back in the day? And I rocked it down to my ankles like Fab. Shout out to Fabulous. Um, I want to talk about the cop or drop section. Uh, every week we like to break down the sneakers that are releasing, pick our favorites, our least favorites. Um, Rich. Yes. You want to start us off with your cop from this week? Yes, absolutely. My cop for this week is the Doc Brown Nike Vandal. Great sneaker. I'm a huge fan of the Nike Vandal itself. How, how did this not happen before? This is obviously a, yeah. a Back to the Future reference, Doc yep. Brown wearing This is the also movie. like the most obscure uh, sneaker, sneaker in the in, movie. Yeah. In so the, far, yeah. maybe there's some like random scene that we forgot about. They did the apparently. Bruin. Yep. They did the Mag, obviously, and this one. This sneaker is absolute fire to me. I'm a huge fan of the Vandal. I beat to death my Atlanta Hawks Vandals that I mm. had back in the day. And this is just dope. My cop of the week, uh, we talked about the shoe last week, the Supreme Humara. I think it's the pink pair for me. I've been kind of going back and forth on which colorway. Nah? I don't no, know. No, these are hard. I don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have any chance at it, especially since we have this strange thing in the office where we can't actually access the Yo. Supreme website. Complex is banned from copying Supreme. It's strange. Supreme won't let Complex employees access their site to cop things on That's Thursday morning. So You'd actually we, have to go off of the Wi-Fi in the office, yes. which would be a shoddy a situation. Which is the reason why I work home on Thursdays. No, I'm just joking. I, I'm going to try my best, though. They're going to hit Nike sneakers yeah. sooner or later. You're going for the tracksuit? Track I want, the hat? I want, I want You want the whole all. joint? Are I you want. going pink from head to toe? I think so, right? I think that's it's a bit much. What if you wear like... like a roadman. What if you go... Pink, I mean, green, and blue, you and then can black. Style for me. <laughs> What's your cop, Wealthy? My my cop of the week. Oh, wait, uh, could it? I'm, this is just a total. Might be a total guess, but is it some obscure Adidas retro model? Is yes. That, yeah, exactly. That I, is. Oh, wow. that I didn't hear a, about until yeah, 30 seconds okay. before the show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't even know about. It. I didn't. Bro, you you do the release roundup. I you do. do a little <laughs> more uh, rounding up. New. Nope. All right. All right. My cop of the week is the Adidas uh, handball top. Mm. This shoe uh, came back randomly. Don't fucking give me that side, bro. I, it's uh, a nice looking shoe. Nice looking saying. shoe. Uh, basically, the like an Adidas collector in the in 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 Europe had the uh, original pair of the shoe went super hard for like a year and a half like mm. posting them like every week finally got the attention of adidas mm. and he's like i have the original shoe you guys can go recreate it here you go and they actually listened to the collectors to bring back a retro model uh rich what's your drop of the week wow fuck you man <laughs> <laughs> my drop of the week and wealthy i know you will completely co-sign this is the adidas nmd xr1 winterized absolute flames <laughs> This is turning a bad shoe worse. Yo, imagine actually wearing that shoe. No, in snow. I don't actually. No, I can actually even be quite dead with this sneaker. This, like, you're you're making the cut four or five inches higher. This is just terrible. Don't send us a pair of these. Um, my drop of the week is the Tinker Blue Nike Hyper Adapt 1.0. This is the biggest surprise I've ever heard in the history of the show. Tell really? Me why. Tell me why. Because I think that like they had like a mood board. At, at at Nike and they're like, like they're like mm, what, can, what can we get Brendan Dunn to write <laughs> what about? What can we sell to Brendan? They're Dunn? like we're gonna take some super techie shoe that's only available on Sneakers app and slap like, Tinker's name on it. Slap Tinker's name on it. <laughs> well, it didn't work. Brendan's gonna eat this shit it up. Didn't work. They probably even gave you the early link to the images on the back end so you could put it on there. It's the one time actually, you didn't have actually, to hack the actually, I website. did. I did post this before anybody else because a different site had the images from Nike Asia, I think, and then was asked to take them down. But Why are you dropping them up, this? So that happened. Um, I'm just tired of the HyperDev 1.0. I don't think it looks good when it's this colorful. I think even uh, our editor-in-chief, Gerald, uh, was at a dinner with Tinker Hatfield this week, Flex, and uh, he asked him about the shoe, and Tinker himself was like, that's such a stupid name. Mm. And this whole thing, you know, that you've mentioned, Rich, where now that Tiffany Beers has left Nike, it's Nike really wants weird. to pretend like Tiffany Beers didn't weird. design the shoe, and they yeah. want to 
attach Tinker's name to it so much. I don't need this. I it, like I like the Hyper Adapt plenty, but tell me about your <laughs> drop of the week. My drop of the week is a Adidas Terex collab done with Exhibition mm. uh, Shop in Ohio. Look, Tell us why you don't like this. Look, What's wrong with this thing? My issue is, is that, so I, I woke up this morning, right? Good, oh thank God. God. Thank God for that. <laughs> well, yeah, I woke up this morning. Exhib- Where did you wake up, by the way? Uh, in so my back bed. alley. Wow. <laughs> in my bed. I woke up in my bed this morning. Well, that's, that's a rarity. <laughs> yeah, I woke up. I woke up in Secaucus, New Jersey. I woke up and I saw Exhibition X Adidas and I was like, oh shit, like what did they get? Yeah. You know, and then I clicked. Amped. It, Only because it said Adidas, you were amped. Right. Mm-hmm. Click it and was like, man, this fucking sucks. Mm. Number one, wool shoes can go all the fuck the way out of the building. Mm. That's number one. What's mm. number two? Number two, it's like, you had to like be like last on the fucking list of like sneakers <laughs> to choose from t- to get this one. That's tough. We'll take that one out and ride into our interview. As I said earlier in the intro, we have two men behind sneakers, the book. And we're going to talk about the book and how it came to be. Let's bring on Howie and Alex. First of all, thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Thank you for having us. It. Give us the background of the book. What is, what is sneakers, the book? Howie and I are journalists and we're always looking for sort of you know, subcultures to investigate and sure. f- sneakers as a fashion object. We're st- sort of starting to make this transition from something that, you know, like a medium sized, super passionate population was really into to something that like our like banker and publicist friends were like. Mm. From non sneakerheads. From non sneakerheads. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great daily sneaker resources out there, like what you guys do. So sure. we were like, you know, like what if we started talking to the people there's who are actually. There's only one. There's only one great daily sneaker resource, and that is, of course, Soul Collector. Yes. So we started talking about like, okay, like what if we started talking to the people who are like powering, you know, or the, you sure. know, the people who are behind this sort of you know, this this real crest and energy and interest and things like that. Sure. And that's sort of how this came to be. Sort of simultaneously, R- Rodrigo Corral, the, the really wonderful designer who packaged these things together, yep. was also thinking about a sneaker book too. And it was just so sort, sort of kismet, here. yeah. You wrote this book not with sneaker heads in mind. We wrote this book with everybody in mind. Okay. We wanted to get everybody, the people who are super passionate, the people who can have a daily show and sound informed and smart and funny and will okay. maybe give yeah, us shit for things us. in the book. We did call you. Oh, okay. we, we called. We missed a full size run chapter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking. And <laughs> people who maybe didn't know and want to learn and also, you know, a, a kid who's maybe just getting into it and wants to know everything all in one place. We wanted it to be a, a, a fun thing to read, a useful thing to read, okay. something that spoke to people's passions, sure. you know. How did you guys set out to create, like what was the starting point for this book? I understand the background of it, but where did you start? What was A1, the first thing we were going to do? We, we knew we had to speak to some history first. We gotcha. knew we couldn't launch you know, our first book about sneakers without talking to some, some key figures at the very beginning, guys like Bobito Garcia, sure. guys like DJ Peter Clark Moore. Kent, guys mm-hmm. like Peter Moore yeah. and Nike. So, Who was your first interview? Bobito Garcia Bob. was our first yeah. interview. Shout out to Bobito. It, it, it was on a playground yeah. in, in Chinatown. It was right before he was uh, very, very gonna, gonna play some ball. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there were a bunch of kids playing basketball, you know, like little kids, 11 year olds or whatever. And one of the kids was wearing Air Force Ones, which Dope. was amazing. And I was like, do you, do you know who that guy is? Yeah. You know, and they were like, no. And then another kid was wearing slides. <laughs> and it was kind of, it was kind of Were amazing. they big bowler slides? Uh, they, it was pre-Big Baller. Ah, Big Baller was just, uh, just no. a gleam in, in Lonzo Ball's eye. Big Baller's the, only slide. <laughs> what, what was the most, uh, you know, surprising interview out of out of it yeah. for you guys? So, I, you know, Howie and I both really, like, glommed on to different aspects of this. Like, Howie got really into, like, innovation and sort of going to big corporations like Adidas and Nike where people had access to, like, the machinery of the industry. Sure. And I was super attracted to sort of like the people who were kind of like on the outskirts of all of that. And mm. I think the sort of the most surprising people sort of like for me like sort of existed in that in that space. Like Gary Lockwood, Freehand Profit, who's tearing apart like mm. total grails and making right. gas masks out of them. You know, like that was just sort of like the first time I saw those, I was like, holy shit. Like a lot of those interviews were really surprising to me. You know, like hearing people talk about, you know, like having to sort of fight their way into you know, like into the system, into the culture, Mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, I've I've been thinking this the whole time and I'm glad I flipped past this page. How much does this guy look like Mark Dolce? Did you you think that when you first saw him? Him? Yeah. Uh, There's 
Quite a Quite a resemblance. I look at him like every day, and I've, that's never. Really? No, that's never occurred to me. No yeah. relation. That's super to your... funny. No, no. Right. Who was the hardest to get then of, of everyone that you did? There's a lot of people in there with with super busy schedules. I mean, just to line things up with with Nike. Yeah, I mean, like, negotiating with Nike is like negotiating with with a government. I've I've gotten the journal. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I've gotten the journalist visa to get into China quicker than you know. I've gotten interview, interviews at Nike, but once you're in, yeah. and once they commit to the project, they were fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. once it was, you know, after the negotiations, it was just like, here's Tinker, here's Bruce Kilgore. Like yeah. we just we went out there and we did it all in one shot. Here's so, Jesse Leva. Like once we had chapters sort of coming together and being written, right. we had a pretty limited window of time where we had to get chapters to Rodrigo and his team to, you know, we photoed a lot of stuff, art was created, you know, all these things had to be done. So we had this like really little window of time where we would be like, oh man, like we should you know, we should get this guy. You know, like, so we sort of ran out of time. There were sure. people who were like, oh, they didn't, you know, like they didn't answer the email in the first five seconds, so like we just gotta move on. Gotcha. Yeah. One thing I wanna ask, the, the story of sneakers has been told and told and told and told, and maybe there's some people in the book that were like, we were personally kind of like, hey, that person shouldn't be, you mm -hmm. know, part, part of the story, or like, I'm sick and tired of like hearing the story from this person for okay. the umpteenth time. Did you Who ever people, like wealthy? what? Who are those people? I mean, I'm, I don't want to hear Jeff Staple ever talk about the pigeon dunk again. I'm sorry, um, but that's just you got no time for Jeff Staple. You no. can tell it to his face when no. he comes on the show. No, okay. Either way, <laughs> but, but did, did you ever like? I know you you said maybe you're, it's for everyone. Did you ever worry that you were maybe gonna like? retell too many stories too many yeah, all the, all as, the time. as a journalist yeah. we, we know who we thought about a lot is the people in this office because that's that's like the real filter that's like the real bar for for the knowledge and the taste and it's like i was Say always thinking <laughs> it's the bar Let's for the knowledge the and the taste it's okay, true it's in you. this room it's in this office like these guys know more about sneakers than than anybody Sorry. they cover Sell it it's, it's, right it's, it's job it's work <laughs> to, to to get to that though so like i get that yeah but here's the other thing i think a lot of those people still have stories that are worth telling and being known. You know what I mean? Like, there, like, there are some people in the book that are, you know, they don't have 50 million Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have 20,000 Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. We have, So there was a guy I met in there named Justin Snowden, and I met him in Undefeated in Just LA. randomly. You just, were shopping. Just, okay. I was sneaker shopping. Yeah. It was yeah. the day that the Black Toes dropped. Mm -hmm. And I was in there, and he was with his girlfriend, and he was decked out. He looked awesome. Mm -hmm. and, he was, and he was in all Adidas stuff. He got stuff. a fit off. Yeah, he looked, he looked great. Very important. And he uh, and I started talking to this guy, and he was telling me that he only he only buys Adidas, and he mm. got into the story about like, you know, it started when I was a kid. You couldn't wear Nike and Adidas cause, together because then you had mixed oh emotions. Oh my God, never! You know what I mean? Thank you. And, and it sort of and it sort of generated this whole conversation. Doesn't where got cut to the, the tags fact, until he wears something. Doesn't Sometimes cut the doesn't tag, cut tags at all. Keeps the receipts in the pocket, so mm -hmm. so he has like this memory wow. of the you know what was going on in his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he started talking about. I start, said to him like, how many pairs do you have? He's like, I you know four or five hundred pairs of Adidas at home. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, how wealthy? do you, like, how are you what's make, the... You're making Wealthy hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was you like, got to introduce him. He was like, what's your rotation? <laughs> he was like, I don't wear any of them. What? And it, yeah. Okay. I, I just keep them in boxes, a stash around, you know, like I, I display them like art. Where can we find this book if we wanted to purchase it? Booksellers everywhere. Booksellers book everywhere. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bestseller on Amazon. Yeah, you know we what? sold out yesterday. Congratulations. Don't. There's a lot of people worked on this book and just to watch what they were putting together every day, their photography assets, there's watercolor paintings in there, there's hand drawings, there's abstract work, there's collage, the yeah. way the photos are, and just Very to, nice to even just to see the outtakes, the outtakes would have been a good book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so yeah. making the physical book was the fun part. Of course, you don't know how people are going to respond to a physical book. Sure. Do people who like sneakers also like books? And we were betting on yes, because as much as, you know, the digital world is, is where the news is and and how everyone digests information. Sneaker people are object people. They want to sure. hold something. They want to collect something. Wow. Dope. So, fellas, you'll stick around. We have another segment. Yeah, as per usual, at the end of the show, we like to dip into our mailbag and take a couple user-submitted questions. If you guys have anything you want us to address on the show, please let us know in the YouTube comments. We will comb through those and find the most intelligent of them, which is often a difficult task. You know what <laughs> First question we have today is from Patrick Villar on YouTube. He wants to know what is the worst sneaker in your collection and why. Gentlemen, do, do you, you can fellas, field you want, this yeah. one as well answer? if you want to. Yeah. 
Uh, I got I, Nike ID'd a pair of uh, Hirachis to look like Mars Yards, and when I washed them, all the the suede on the si on like on the sides ran into the Ugh. the white uh, paneling. And they're pretty terrible. I'm so glad. There's so many Nike ID decisions that I'm glad I never, never made. made. You yeah. know, it's like late one night, and it's like 1 a.m., and you're like, man, I'm gonna wake up in the morning and just 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 make it happen. But and you don't even drink, so it's like <laughs> you, 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 you don't even have that excuse. Man. You don't even have that excuse. What is the worst sneaker in your collection? Oh man, I actually have a pair of uh, Jordan 21 SEs. Mm. I believe that. And that, that sneaker does suck. That sneaker sucks. I bought them. 100%. 100%. I bought them. Uh, you I bought was, them? I was working at Foot Locker and they were $20.99. That's. I got, I got 21, 21 for 21. For 21. Bucks. Yeah, I know, but deal. you could have went to like the food court in the mall and got something better for $21 than <laughs> that sneaker, dude. Uh, I think, what, what is your worst sneaker? Um, Justin Japaya in the comments is suggesting this, the Wheat uh, Packer <laughs> Reebok. <laughs> that's not in my collection though, that's in yours. No, he's, he's saying that for me. Oh, okay. Um, actually, I think, so it's really hard for me to pick an actual worst because, yeah. um, and this is gonna sound uh, precious, but brands send us a lot of stuff that we don't want. Oh, you flex know? again. I mean, come on. <laughs> we, we all, all of us, we get shoes in the mail that uh, you see and you're like, I wish I wish I didn't have to figure out what to do with this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set all those aside and yes, only focus on stuff yeah, yeah. I've paid money for, and I would say the Shooting Stars foam posit pack, oh, God. just because oh, I spent I spent you know whatever retail was five, was it 500, Wait, and I was you, like you know I'm just gonna sit on this and flip this, but then they sat at so n not only is it not a great shoe, but just that I thought I was being uh, savvy by buying it to resell. And, and you it, still have it in your it, collection. I'm just waiting for the day. You know maybe Penny Hardaway will die, God forbid, Chill. and you know <laughs> the value will will skyrocket. I don't know, but yes, it's at the very bottom of a, a tall stack of sneakers. Or maybe one day you can bequeath it on your next of kin. Well, yeah. That That'll, that's yeah, what we do. hopefully. We should, we should do a giveaway on full size run with your with your uh, shooting your stars. Worst I, I might have to dust out the shooting stars pack. Rich, what's I, yours? My worst sneaker. This is a sad story, actually. My worst sneaker is, and I, and I hate to say this because it's, whatever. It's my bespoke Air Force One that I made. I, you know, you don't ever. I want to really, see these. I'll, I'll bring them I in. It's see. actually an okay sneaker, but the, the point why I'm saying it's the worst is like you really only get but so many chances to bespoke a sneaker. I was. Nike was lucky. Was, I was lucky enough for Nike to give me that chance, Flex. and I just I didn't nail it. It's like this Nike ID thing, right? Yeah. Especially because it's like a moment in time, yeah. and, and it's all on you. And it feels even worse because you're yeah. like, not only does this suck, but I fucking yeah. I designed this. I didn't. Best, I didn't nail it. It's an eight hundred dollar sneaker. I didn't pay for it. Thank God. But the best I advice that I've ever gotten from you know people who do the, do that sort of stuff for a living is yeah. like they're like don't try to like make something crazy. They're like just go in there and just try to make a colorway that you think looks good. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is what I did. Yeah. I, but I still, you I didn't the lock it. What does it look like? We'll bring it in. We'll bring it in. We'll bring it All in. All right, cool. Uh, worst sneaker in your collection. No, my curation's tight, man. <laughs> uh, Someone's lying on set today. <laughs> <laughs> we have you know AP on Twitter saying, what is a favorite shoe in your collection that most people have never seen, never heard of? He wants something more obscure and random, not just something super rare. Um, I'll take this one, actually. I have a pair of Nike Blazers that was like a, a UK-only release from like five years ago. It's a blue leather pair with like a, a, a snakeskin swoosh and it looks a lot like those Stussy all courts that they did. And one of the guys at Mercer was like bugging me trying to figure out where I got them from too. So that's, and I, and I wear those regularly, so that's, that's high up there. You don't, know, you don't know what it is for you? No, I don't. Go ahead, you, I'll come back to it. Oh, yeah, I have some Complex X Vans 420 lace-ups. Sort of green suede on the. Wow, I didn't yeah, know that. They, they were released on, in April, and they're like the the, uh, the the sides. The upper is sort of like a tropical print. Mm. Oh, pretty okay. cool. Sort of green green suede on the toe. Yeah, actually, yeah, what, nice. what, what is it for you? Uh, it's actually a shoe that I really really regret <laughs> let, letting go of. Oh, okay. okay. So you're gonna say uh, buying? No, no, no. Really regret letting go of like uh, 10, 10, 12 years ago. I went to an old uh, Nike sort of um, R and D lab, and they had a pair of the Nike Air Terra Goatex. Yeah. Um, I used to have that shoe. I used to rock it. It was the gray blue, and then it had the yellow. I got rid of those. I sold them. I think I paid whatever. I, I sold them for one hundred and fifty bucks. So they're not Nike in your talk, And I'm fucking mad at myself for it. Still. So. I think mine now that you mentioned it, you went like with the UK. I'm gonna say it's the Unheineken Nike Dunk High that dropped. Years back, maybe mm, over a decade ago, just yeah, regular, yeah. but it was a uh, like a Euro UK exclusive. Yeah. 
fire. Yeah. fire I saw those at, at a DNA when we were reporting this book, and they were something that I never knew actually existed. I right. Had heard, I had heard of that. Black mm -hmm. with the green swoosh, red yeah, laces. amazing. Absolute fire. Amazing. No one's ever heard of that sneaker, probably. But amazing. Don't. Your yeah. favorite? I don't have anything that what? obscure. I'm not, I'm <laughs> not the least <laughs> funny. He's got a collection. Wait, wait, wait. Look at his feet. Are, yeah. is, is that your only pair of sneakers? I have one <laughs> pair of sneakers. I, I really, I really yeah, like you just like you have this and we, we co-sign it, so you know there's not a, anything else. The truth comes out. All right, you're gonna skip on that question as well. We will do some digging. Uh, we have Mr. Mr. Panama. Sorry if I mispronounce that on YouTube. Saying if you could get any athlete to switch brands with a magic wand right mm -hmm. now, who and where to? And another viewer from New Zealand. Shout, Shout out to, to New, New Zealand. Zealand. This one's easy for me. It'd be Lavar Ball to. Not Lonzo? You want LeVar? LeVar Ball too. <laughs> Lonzo Ball, the whole Ball family. It would be Lonzo Ball to... Sketchers? Wait, they're already there. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Zing. It would be uh, Lonzo Ball to Jordan. Okay. Uh, I, would, okay. I, would, I would say Steph Curry to anybody. Yeah, you're not feeling the Under Armour Any, stuff? Anybody. I would like to see Steph Curry and Ewings before Under Armour. Oh, wow. oh Jesus right. Christ. Shout out to Patrick Ewing. All right. I don't, I don't have any strong opinions about <laughs> no? this one. Yeah. yeah, no. Okay, Lonzo Ball. This is a great question. Kid Alt Life on Twitter wants to know, does Matthew J. Welty outright hate Jordans? Um, is it more the fact that he wouldn't be caught dead in a pair? Like, explain oh, shout, shout, this, out, shout out to this kid. He hits me up. Uh, was, this deep-seated... Uh, no, I was, I was supposed to meet up with him. This kid works at Size in Copenhagen. Why do you have this hatred for Jordan. Because, all right, here's, here's, here's the real... We're okay. going to get to it. Okay. We're going to get to it. the real truth of it. So when I got... I was never a big Jordan guy growing up. Just is what it is, right? Gotcha. Yeah. That was not a deep-seated hatred that. or whatever, just it's more different shit, name. right? Okay. Yeah. And then when I got into sneaker media, like, you know, around like 2012, 2013, yeah. mm -hmm. when Jordans were like the shit, I really felt like the people who were into Jordans and into into basketball sneakers when I was into different stuff were really fucking condescending. You felt you you were excluded from the cool guy group because you didn't like Jordans. Yeah, but now you're at the top of the cool guy group. Right? No, but I'm not. But I no, but I really felt like there was a real condescending sort of thing because the people who wore Jordans thought that they were the fucking shit. Right. And now all of a sudden Still that do. but now all of a sudden that Jordans uh, aren't um I'll go fucking shoot. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. This, this one gets a pass. No, I, oh, I, you're close on my Jays. No, no, Thank dude, you. I, I like Jordans from like a design aesthetic and that okay. sort of stuff. I can appreciate it. I mean, I wrote a piece for Complex Sneakers. Like, why I don't wear Air Jordans? And it, you know, it kind of outlines that it, I just think... Uh, it, but also, so you're you're still harboring those deep uh, feelings uh, today. Maybe so we, 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 we just let go of yeah, them. Yeah, we can I, get past that. I just right think now. some 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 them. some people out there uh, want to be about about it with some sort of sneakers. About and, about it, and okay. they don't and they don't really have the fucking uh, leg up in the game. So, got it. Okay, that was a lot deeper than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, thank you both for joining us today. Thank I wish you, you guys the you best it. of luck with the book. I do hope to see you guys on Price of Hype one day. I do want to make that happen. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor at Complex Sneakers. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Listen, this is important. I need you to subscribe. They're going to make me keep wearing these fake Skechers Yeezys until we hit 50,000 subscribers. So please, subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube. Now.